Welcome back to my Noir Amour Academy game devlogs. Today's devlog is all about my environment art. Specifically, the process of creating this classroom for my game in Blender, 3D Coat, and finally, Unreal Engine 5. If you haven't seen the other episodes in this series, I'd highly recommend it, so you can have the proper context on my game and its story. Link to the playlist is in the description. As mentioned in a previous video, I decided to create the History Classroom of Normal Academy as a sort of art test. It was meant to demonstrate the viability of a mostly black and white hand-painted art style. I wanted to see how well it might work, and then put it into Unreal Engine to experiment with the lighting. Additionally, I wanted this classroom to be the location of the tutorial and demo of the game for our future crowdfunding campaign. The beginning of the story and initial puzzles would take place here. And it'd be a good introduction to the game and show of potential backers how the full game might be like. And now, a word from our sponsor, me! Caius Nelson and I worked together on creating this bite-sized platforming game, Liberty Bell. It's now available on Steam for only $2.99. If you're interested in a fast, fun little platforming experience, make sure to check it out. So, without further ado, let's get into the weeds of how I made this classroom. Concept. The initial idea for this project was to figure out the architecture style and tone of Noir Amar Academy's environment. I realized that, of course, a gothic style was definitely a must for a mysterious school setting. I wanted the building to feel old and full of untold stories. It was a given, then, to gather reference images of old English boarding schools, colleges, and churches. I also looked at other classrooms of the time to find decor such as old desks or globes. Architecture design is not my strong suit. I am definitely more of a character art girl, so the prospect of modeling such an environment felt a bit daunting, but something I had to learn and grow in in order to make this dream game come true. Research helped a lot here. Modeling and texturing. Blender is, as usual, my favorite cowboy in the West. I wrestled up a few walls and made some tileable textures in 3D Coat to use to block out the room. The first block out I made was way too small, and didn't capture that feeling I wanted. My friends suggested making the place bigger and grander. Not to mention, I realized that such a tight space wouldn't be as fun to explore or navigate in a third-person game. So I expanded it out. I put in these pillars for an extra grandiose feeling, added more windows, and made the walls a mix of wooden paneling and plaster. I decided to make the floor tiles quite dark in order to draw the eyes up. Chalkboards were a must, of course, and I also created the teacher, Mrs. Grinsby's, desk and chair. It was fun creating all the little things on her desk. The globe was a good chance for me to roughly chart out the planet of Noives. Grinsby has a teapot and a cup to help calm her frazzled nerves. The bell helps her get her class's attention. The scrolls and textbooks help establish the subjects being taught, and the romance book, uh, well, that's for the teacher's off time. When it came to what kinds of historical items might be found in this classroom, I decided to go with a Tudor, uh, Elizabethan type feel. The school was founded in a time period reminiscent of that era, so many of the artifacts shown are inspired by that. Old portraits, Tudor-style home models, clothing displays, night helms, and tapestry. I wanted it to be obvious at first glance what subject is taught in this classroom, and have enough unique objects in it to hold interest and make players want to examine them. Since the Onyx War and politics between the fiefdoms is also a big part of the game's story, I added in objects to reflect this. Banners of the house symbols, a battlefield model, textbooks on the war, and a map of Northburg and Drakenspire help communicate these ideas. For stuff like the maps, portraits, and other elements, I used Procreate on my iPad to draw them, and then used the exported PNG as a texture sheet. Everything else was textured in 3D coat, just like my characters. The nice thing about texturing in black and white is that it's pretty easy to change the value of anything fast without worrying about color changes. One of the little details I liked doing the most were the textbooks and other little student office supply stuff. I just thought they were cute and scattering them around the classroom desks to make the place feel more lived in was nice. I made a stapler, glue paste, eraser, gum pack, pencils, charcoals, because colored pencils or markers would be kind of pointless here, rulers, book bags, and more. A very important thing to keep in mind when texturing is differences in materials. 
Since I'm doing a hand-painted art style, I can't rely on specular maps or metalness maps. I have to paint in all the reflections and material differences. For example, on this helmet, all of the reflections are painted on. Wooden objects, though, wouldn't look as shiny, so they have less differences in value. I paint in grain lines to make it feel more like wood. Learning how to paint different materials is the backbone of being a stylized artist, and it's something I'm still actively learning. Using reference is always a gal's best friend. Functionality. Of course, I had to keep in mind that this space needed to have functionality. It's a game after all. So as I was creating the pieces that decorate the classroom, I wondered what parts could be used for puzzle objects. The battle map, for example, was designed to be an interactable object. The player will be able to move around the little soldier figures for a puzzle. Other objects in the room, such as the portraits and the bookcases, will also have to do with the puzzles. But I won't be revealing too much about them. You'll have to solve the puzzles for yourself when the demo comes out. One thing that I ended up changing to suit the needs of the game was the crystal tree on this back platform. As the centerpiece of the room, it didn't quite work, not only because it didn't necessarily match the historical theming, but also because it blocked the view of the lady design on the stained glass window. I felt replacing it would be a good opportunity to add in a statue I could use for a puzzle. When creating the tapestry that hangs over the teacher's desk, I designed a dog-like creature called a cave hound. I imagined that they were used by Cyquine as hunting dogs and companions. Since this tapestry is a centerpiece of theming in this room, I thought making the statue a cave hound looking up at the tapestry, as if eager to join the hunt, would be a good fit. And instead of blocking the stained glass window lady in the back, the hound would enhance it, as if it was her loyal companion. I made sure to reference stone statues as I painted its texture, and I also gave it a collar that will have to do with a puzzle. And voila! Now the centerpiece of the room matches both the theming and as part of the demo's functionality. Lighting Now, after almost all of the classroom was modeled, I decided it would be a good time to import it into Unreal Engine and do some lighting and material tests. Hand-painted art usually has either no lighting used for it, like in League of Legends, or a more specialized light system like that in Warcraft. This is due to hand-painting tending to bake a lot of the lighting into the characters. Using lighting on these models in the wrong fashion can wash out their colors or make the texturing look flat, since they don't usually use normal maps. On Kitty Roo, we had a separate material shader for the characters that made them lighter than the objects around them in order to make sure they stood out. Their roughness was maxed and their specularity at zero. What's fun about my black and white art style for Noirimar, though, is that I don't have to worry as much about colors being washed out. Instead, I want to focus more on my models being lit dramatically and I need to use values well. I ran into a problem, though. Lighting these scenes with just pure white light felt boring and lacked depth. I decided that using colored lights on black and white objects, like in some areas of the school in Danganronpa, would add more character and life to these rooms. The world might be mostly black and white, but adding in just a tint of color to the lighting adds extra oomph. I also experimented with a hatching shader I got from the Unreal Marketplace. I think it gives that nice, inclined hatching feel I was looking for, though I may still be altering it in various ways. Outlines around the character models are something I'd like to get your thoughts on. I think they might be needed to help them stand out better from the backgrounds, but I wonder if they mess with immersion too much. Let me know what you think. Well, that's it for this video. I have a few ideas for what my next episode will cover, from character animation to script writing to game flow. I guess you'll just have to wait to find out. Make sure to check out Liberty Bell on Steam if you're interested. My game, The Fantastic Kitty Roo, is also on Steam. My Etsy store contains quite a few acrylic charms and posters that I've been selling with my art on them. Look forward to charms of my little avatar here, Rita Ragtime, releasing soon. And of course, I would most appreciate it if you stopped by my Patreon page. Links to all of these things in the description. Thank you!